Lakshmi Tantra, Chapter 6 The Six Koshas of Shakti Shri I am the primordial eyehood of Hari, who possesses, though in unmanifest form, the aggregate of the six divine attributes. Hari is the great ocean of consciousness and bliss, and his tranquility and pervasiveness resemble the waveless ocean. Although I am so pure, sometimes I project myself. Then I, Vishnu's absolute essence, the goddess Shakti consisting of reality and consciousness, and distinguished by my urge to create, evolve into the states of the six koshas, shakti, maya, prasuti, prakriti, consisting of the three gunas, brahmanda, the cosmic egg, and the jiva deha, the individual living being. These six are called the six koshas. Shakti, the first kosha, follows the pure course of creation and is the urge to create that emanated from Hari's eyehood. Kosha is a synonym for kulaya, nest, which is another name for body. The supreme god, Sankarshan, the lord, ego consciousness, is manifested in this first pure kosha, which is characterized by the initial appearance of unmesha, creative activity. In him, all effects, created things, lie dormant and indistinct, like faint marks on a human body. The goddess, consisting of his eyehood, is myself, called the Absolute Sankarshani, known as Sri. I possess the divine attributes of Vijnana and Bala. My further emanation from her is called Pradyumna. Divine Pradyumna, the Supreme Purusha Purushottama, exists as the Buddhi, intelligence, of divine Sankarshan who is manifest in Shakti Kosha. There, in him, all the enjoyers and their objects of enjoyment lie dormant. That which is said to be the eyehood of the divinity who forms the cosmic mind is myself, bearing the name Saraswati, who evolves Virya and Aishwarya out of herself. My further emanation from her is known as Aniruddha. As Aniruddha, I exist as the egohood of Sankarshan. These three ancient divinities, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha, are known as Jiva, Buddhi, and Ahankar. They are indeed a Prakrita, not phenomenal nor consisting of the three gunas, but consist of pure consciousness. In keeping with the special functions of the first vyuha, the resplendent gods Vasudeva, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha are each designated by a special name. All of them are said to possess all six divine attributes, and all of them are Purushottamas, distinguished from ordinary living beings. He who appeared first from the eternal blissful ocean of all six inert divine gunas is Vasudeva, in whom all six divine gunas simultaneously become active. His eyehood is called Shanti, who is myself, known as Shakti, who is considered to be the substratum of the three divinities existing in the Shakti Kosha. Ah.
Aniruddha's eyehood is named Rati, who is identified with the goddess Mahalakshmi, and he is called the Maya Kosha. The two, Mahakali and Mahavidya, are said to be the active state of Mahalakshmi, which is known as the Guna of Maya. My third great kosha is known as Prasuti and consists of Mahalakshmi, Mahamaya, and Mahavidya, embodying the manifested gunas of Rajas, Tamas, and Sattva, respectively. In that kosha were the three couples about which I have already spoken in the fifth chapter. That famous Pradhan, wherein Purushottama lay afloat after it has been transformed into water, is called Prakriti, the source of all, in which the three gunas exist in perfect equilibrium. The cosmic egg that was formerly created by Virinshi, and which consists of himself and exists in himself, is called Prakriti by some scholars. The egg, evolving into creation starting with Mahat and ending with Prithivi, the gross elements, is called Brahmanda, in which Brahma became Viraj. The sixth kosha, comprised of bodies of living beings incorporating organs and limbs, gradually became gross. These are the six descents of myself, who am called the Absolute. In the first kosha, God himself exists in all three types of I-hood. Shakti kosha consists of Vasudeva, in whom Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha lie dormant, and Vasudeva's I-hood, Shanti, contains their three I-hoods. In the other five koshas, the jivas exist in diverse forms. The jivas suffer different fates resulting from deeds classified as good or bad. But the three divine goddesses, the couples emanating from them, and their incarnations in the egg are created to share my sovereignty and, as part of the pure creation, are not affected by the results of their deeds. The bodies of both gods and goddesses are not products of Prakriti. They are not influenced by the three gunas. In the other five koshas, jivas manifest themselves on different levels of existence, starting from the celestial demigods and ending with the immovables, plants, and proceed from life to life affected by their deeds. Having destroyed the effects of their deeds and become adhikara, qualified through intense righteousness, living beings gain abundant knowledge and yoga redeems their sins, whereafter they start ascending the koshas step by step and never fall downwards. Once having attained the level of satyaloka, from there onwards they do not return. They stay there or proceed higher. Chakra O Goddess, who appearest from the milky ocean, wife of the god Padmanabha, I prostrate myself before thee, who art lotus-born. Deign to explain who a living being is. Shri The primordial absolute I-hood of Hari is myself, and I am the transcendental supreme goddess. O celestial chakra, it is held that I, the above-mentioned, have four states. One of these states is Pramata, the knower, the next is Antakarana, the inner subtle organ. The third state is the external senses. And the fourth is Bhava Bhumika, 
the created objects. Brahmata is said to consist of the sentient and is a finite state of mind. Though I am not limited by place, time, etc., yet of my own free will I voluntarily impose limitations on myself without, however, abandoning my eternal transcendental nature. The first limitation that occurs in this way is called Brahmata. Just as this universe is enclosed within me, who am consciousness, so also it is enclosed within the knower, in the same way as a hill is enclosed in a mirror. The uniqueness of the knower, or his twofold, threefold, fourfold, or thirty-fivefold aspects, are explained as follows. He is unique as identical with the revealing self. As the knower and the objects known, he is twofold. He is threefold when the process of cognition is added. His fourfold aspect is mana, mata, maya, and miti, the instrument of knowledge, subject of knowledge, object of knowledge, and cognition itself, respectively. And, as identified with all the cosmic principles, he is 37 in number. Chakra O lotus-eyed goddess, what are these principles? How many are they? And what are their characteristics? I prostrate myself before thee, who was born from the sea. Since I ask, deign to answer me. Shri The elements classified according to their gross and subtle forms number ten. The senses also number ten when divided into their cognitive and conative groups. The inner senses are three in number. The realities propounded by the sattvatas are prakriti, prasuti, and maya. Then sattva, rajas, and tamas, kala, niyati, babe, shakti, gurusha, haramang nabaha, absolute space, and Bhagavan, God. <laughs>